Hello everyone and welcome to this Avid Blogs tutorial series, Get Started Fast with Titler Pro. My name is Kevin P. McAuliffe and in this four part tutorial series we're going to cover all the basics that you need to know to get up and running as quickly as possible with Titler Pro from New Blue Effects. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, you know, Titler Pro, why would I need this titling application? Well, something that's important to keep in mind, especially as we move towards larger than HD projects, is that as of the recording of this tutorial, the title tool and the marquee title tool are currently not supported in larger than HD projects. So you're going to need a titling alternative. And to be honest, you're not going to be wanting to be constantly exporting clips to go to an, you know, a third party compositing application to create titles when you can create professional looking titles right inside your Media Composer timeline. And the best part is, is that depending on whether you have a perpetual or a subscription license, you're going to have access to either Titler Pro 2 for the perpetual license users or Titler Pro 2.5 for all of the subscription users. Now, of course, that's going to beg the question, you know, really what's the difference between the two different effects? Well, really, you know, there's just some minor differences, things like the quick edit user interface, which we're going to talk about, uh, things like being able to export movies, export images, blending modes, and the elastic timeline, which we're also going to talk about in this tutorial series. So again, for all my perpetual license friends watching this tutorial, you have access to Titler Pro 2, Obviously, for all of you subscription users, you will have access to Titler Pro 2.5. And the best thing is, is that it's absolutely 100% free. As soon as you make your purchase of the subscription or perpetual license, you can download the software and get started right away. Now, of course, that begs the question, how do you go about downloading the software? Well, most people think that you get a link in your email and you're going to download it that way. That's actually not the case. All you're going to need to do is head on up to the application manager. We're going to show the application manager. All we're going to do is come over to the app section and you'll notice that if I scroll down, you'll have access to either Titler Pro 2 version 2.5 or Titler Pro version 2.0. Obviously, all you're going to need to do is simply click on the download link to download the plugin. Once it's downloaded, you can simply double click on it, install it, and you'll be up and running in a few minutes. Now, of course, what's important to also keep in mind, doesn't matter if you're Mac, doesn't matter if you're Windows. In this tutorial series, I'm going to be working on the Mac, but everything I show you is going to work exactly the same in the Windows version of Titler Pro 2 as well. Okay, so let's get into Media Composer. And in this lesson, I just want to cover some real basics to get you really excited about this fantastic effect. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for all my Windows friends out there. And I have a sample title, a very basic title here in my timeline. That would sort of be the opening title sequence, or at least the start of the opening title sequence for potentially a feature film. Now what makes this title unique is the fact that it is not just a title. It's actually three titles that are contained within this one effect. Now that's something that's a little bit different that you're going to have to wrap your head around is that we're not just creating single titles anymore. Not like we're doing inside a marquee or what we're doing inside of the title tool. We can actually create complicated and intricate, you know, title sequences, including, you know, credit crawls and things like that right from within this one effect in our timeline. Okay, now there's obviously a few ways to apply the effect. You can see right now the way that I have it applied is the way that I prefer to apply it, which is on a layer above the clip that we want to have the title appear on top of. Now, of course, we could take you know the Titler Pro effect. We could drag and drop it onto the bottom clip here, but why would we want to do that? Because ideally, and I'm, what I'm going to do is here is I'm just going to add some edits here. And let's come into the effects palette here. Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 on Windows. Let's come right down here to the ends, of course, for new blue Titler Pro 2.5. I'm simply going to take the effect, drag and drop up here into V2. Now, the reason you'll see that I now have the default text value, which just says enter text. The reason I apply it to a layer above the clip that I want to have it applied to is that if a producer comes in and says, oh, Kev, can you do me a favor? Can you, you know, uh, you know, cut that down by 16 frames? Oh, you know what? No problem. I'm simply going to step into trim mode. I'm just going to press back twice on the, on the jump back eight frames our trim left eight frames button here. And you'll see now that we've now trimmed that. What we can also do is just dynamically trim it by simply grabbing and dragging whichever direction we need to trim it. We could even have this effect go over two shots if we wanted to. Whereas if we had the effect applied to a clip, we wouldn't be able to do that, okay? Now something else that's very cool about Titler Pro 
is I'm going to take a couple other titles here. Let's take, uh, let's just actually add some edits in here. I'm just going to add in Honolulu. Let's add in, uh, this is the Taj Mahal. Let's add in the White House here. Okay. And let's talk about a little bit of a common situation that you might run into when you're working in your projects. In a lot of cases, you might have an assistant editor go through your timeline and drop in titles that you know that you're going to replace later with fancy animated titles, but you really just want to get the titles in there as placeholders for you to then come back later, like I said, and create, you know, fancier versions of them. Well, how we're accustomed to working in the past is we're normally accustomed to once the titles are here, we're going to have to remove them from our timeline. We're going to have to go to the uh, Titler Pro 2.5 effect and we're going to have to take that, add new edits, drag and drop. You can already hear that this is just a lot of work for me to say. So imagine having to go through your entire timeline, pick all these, uh, these titles, remove them and add titles in in their place. When in reality, you don't actually have to do any of that. All you have to do is simply select all of the titles that you want to update to Titler Pro. Once you have them selected, simply navigate up to Tools, come right down here to the bottom to Promote Titles. I can then turn them around and promote all these titles to Titler Pro, and you'll see that they immediately switch from being Title Tool titles to, and I'm just going to come in here, to Titler Pro 2.5 Effects. So conceivably, you could add in all those titles and you'll see that the title is still exactly the same as it was before, but these are now completely editable in Titler Pro 2.5 or of course version 2.0, depending on the version that you happen to be using. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about creating some text quick or creating a text animation quickly here. What I'm going to do is again, much like I did before, I'm going to come back and I'm just going to add a couple edits in here. Let's go F6 and F6. That's my shortcut to add edit. I'm going to simply take the Titler Pro 2.5 effect. I'm going to drag and drop it down here. I'm going to step into effects mode. My shortcut is shift and Y on the keyboard. And I'm simply going to launch the user interface. Now you'll remember before that I did mention the quick edit window very briefly. And I said we're going to be going a little bit more in depth in this window in a little bit. So why don't I talk about this for a second here? The quick edit window is actually fairly self-explanatory. It lets you get in and quickly edit titles inside of your timeline. Now you're going to see that I have over here a title list. And what does this title list represent? Well, believe it or not, Titler Pro can actually look at all of the titles that you've applied in your timeline with Titler Pro, and you actually have access to edit the titles right here from within the quick edit window. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that the Titler Pro quick edit window, the title list is going to remember every title that you've added, whether the titles are still inside your timeline or not. To get this window to refresh itself, you will need to quit out of Media Composer and come back in. So keep that in mind. But let me give you an example here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this window here for a second because I'm going to come back to my previous title here. And you're going to notice that in here, it's a Columbia Pictures Presents Tangled Web Productions of a Kevin McAuliffe film. So I want to get in and I want to change this, but to be honest, I don't know much about Titler Pro. So how do I get in and adjust this? Ah, it's actually very easy. What I'm going to do is come into any effect that happens to have Titler Pro 2.5 on it. I'm going to launch the interface. I'm simply going to select that first title. What I could do now is simply come right down here and I can type in my own name, Kevin. Now I should probably type it all in caps here since the previous one that was there was all in caps. So Kevin P. McAuliffe film. And now you're going to see that as I drag through, it's now a Kevin P. McCullough film updated literally that quick. And as soon as I close the quick edit window, you're going to see the effect quickly render itself. And what I'm going to do now is simply come right back down to that first title. I'm going to drag through. And there is a Kevin P. McCullough film updated almost immediately inside of my timeline. Very, very cool. Okay, now I did say I was going to go in and show you how to do a basic title. Okay, so let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to this, uh, this Titler Pro 2.5 effect that I'd applied on here. And what I want to do is instead of coming in and adjusting the text, which I could easily do from here, I could type in my name again here. Let's actually do it in upper and lower case this time. Okay. Now, as great as it is to have my name in there, just like that, and you'll see that I can drag through. Okay. What I want to do is actually get in and edit this. You'll see my name fades in and fades out as well. So let's go into the title designer now. As soon as I click on the title designer, I'm now brought to the title design window. Then of course I can come through and I can simply hit the space bar 
and you'll see there's my name in front of the Eiffel Tower. Okay. And what I'd like to do is I'd actually like to change this just a little bit here. Okay. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in somebody else's name. For right now, my name is going to be uh, Jim Jimerson. Okay. And what I'd like to do is just create a very basic reveal of my name here. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is just place my name roughly where I want it to go, which is going to be right about here, let's say. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Okay. This is going to be, let's make sure I spell this right. The Eiffel Tower, and this is going to be in Paris, France. Why not? Let's actually make this a little bit more realistic here. Okay. I'm going to select all my text. Let's left justify it. What we're also going to do here is we're just going to shrink down this part of my text here a little bit. That's a little bit big. Let's make it like, oh, I don't know, uh, maybe about half the size. That's not too bad. And of course, I could get in and adjust the font to be whatever I want it to be. And of course, I can come back again at any time and simply hit the space bar to preview this. But what I'd like to do is like to get in and start, you know, animating this text coming on. Now, most people think, okay, Kev, you're probably going to use keyframes to do this, but believe it or not, I'm actually not going to do any of that. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to navigate up here to the library, and I'm going to use some of the built-in transitions that come with Titler Pro. You're going to see that I have a whole bunch of text styles. So, for example, actually, if I wanted to come in and say, well, let's make this the baseball style, if I just simply hover over the baseball style, you'll see that it updates immediately. Now, I haven't updated anything because if I remove the mouse from hovering over that style, you'll see my text switches back to being the way it was before. Now what's important to keep in mind is that these styles that you see here come packaged with Titler Pro 2.5, but really any of the effects across the new blue effects effects family will actually integrate directly into Titler Pro. So if you were to buy some additional transitions or additional effects and things like that, you can access them all right here from within the Titler Pro 2.5 interface. So why don't I just pick a different one here? Let's go with like, um, I don't know, let's go with Heat Vision, why not? So I'm just simply gonna double click on it, that text has now changed. But what I do wanna do is create a transition for this. So I'm simply gonna head back to the library. I'm not gonna stop playing my timeline. I'm gonna come to transitions. Let's come to animations. Let's come to, um, let's just come to fade in. Let's just take a look here. Maybe we can fade in by word. You'll see if I hover over, it's gonna be updated to show that. I could say, let's say, take a look at some falling here. Let's try some bouncing here, okay? And at any point, once I find one that I like, I think I'm gonna go with one of the fade-ins here. Uh, let's go with like a linear fade-in. Let's see if that's just a standard fade-in. That's just a standard fade. And I think I'll probably pick, let's go in with by word how we had it done before. All I need to do is to simply, I'm just gonna stop playback for right now. Let's just stop that, okay? I'm simply gonna come in and just double click on by word. And as soon as I do, you'll now see that that effect has been applied to the title immediately. I don't actually have to do anything. I could just, again, simply hit play, and there we go. Now, of course, at any time, if I wanted to do a transition out, I could simply come back to the library, and I could come in, and I could pick a different transition to transition out. But you know what? I think I'm just going to do a standard fade out at the end. You'll see that I actually have it right here. And let's just bring this back a little bit so it's a little bit of a slower fade out here. So basically our look now is fade in word by word, get all the way down to the end here, and fade out. Okay, now of course I could add that fade inside a media composer if I wanted to. But all I'm going to do is simply close the Titler Pro interface. I'm going to be asked, okay, well with the changes that you've made, do I want to apply this to a template or to the individual title? I, in this case, I'm just going to say let's just apply it to this title. Okay. What's going to happen now is that the title is going to be cached. Now, what exactly does that mean? Now, you'll see that the title has appeared. Let's actually just go back into the user interface for one second. Let's come back to the title designer. Because up here inside of our settings, we do have some options down here to enable caching. And you'll see that I also have render cache at close. So what exactly does that mean? Well, basically what's going to happen is, is that when I save this title, it's going to cache the title so that inside of Media Composer, and we can close the Titler Pro interface, what's going to happen now is that I dra as I drag through, we get an instantaneous update because we've cached this title. If I didn't set that to be caching, what would happen is, is that each time I clicked on a different frame of this title, it would have to cache that individual frame each time. So this is actually a more efficient way to work. 
yeah, it takes, you know, a few more seconds when you actually save the title out, but it just makes your life so much easier. And you'll see that I get some fantastic real-time playback for the Eiffel Tower title, literally instantaneous. Okay, so I think that's a good place to wrap up our first lesson. Now we have a lot more to come in the next three lessons, including looking at the alignment tools, character editing, creating shapes, working with EPS files. We're going to get more in depth into transitions and effects. And of course, we're also going to talk about keyframing. And don't forget, if you want some more information about Titler Pro for Avid Media Composer, you can simply head on over to newblueeffects.com slash avid dash learn to get some great tips and tutorials and everything you're going to need to know to take your titling workflow to the next level.